Pokemon Duel Trainers. So we all can agree that Mega Gengar is probably the most used Mega in the game. And Tapu Koko is the most used normal EX figure in the game. But who's the best Mega non-Mega combo? Is it Beedrill into Mega Beedrill? Probably not. Is this Swampert into Mega Swampert? Probably not. Let's find out. Stay tuned. It's showtime. We could be. What's up trainers? It's your host Professor Showtime here. Today we're, we're going to be going over the top Pokemon that's a mega non-mega form. That's right, the top mega and non-mega form Pokemon. Like the best one-two combo. You know, like the best Pokemon that's a mega that when it devolves into its normal form, you still have a like a lot to worry about. So, for example, first things up is Mega Venusaur. Venus v mega, mega Venusaur is a very cool Pokemon, but its normal form, it's only a one movement point. So one movement point is not gonna cut it in this meta. It's really difficult to play one movement point Pokemon. Therefore, Mega Venusaur is not gonna be on top of the list. You know, normal Venusaur is only used in poison decks, and even then sometimes we don't see them. Next up, we have Mega Charizard. Mega Charizard X and Mega Charizard Y is full of, fall to the same um, things that Mega Venusaur falls into because normal Charizard is just one, move, one movement point as well. I mean, sure, you can evolve from Char Charmeleon or from Charmander to Charizard to make your Char Charizard two movement points, but let's face it, that's a little bit too much work. So Mega Charizard X, Mega Charizard Y, Mega Venusaur, all not um great figures because their normal figures have one movement point. Next up, we have Mega Blastoise. Now, I love Mega Blastoise blue turtle missile ability the turtle middle missile ability is awesome i mean you have an opp opportunity to knock out at least two pokemon from the from the for the from the other team but the problem with uh mega blastoise is normal blastoise is really lackluster normal blastoise only has a two star purple that knocks out figures with one star purples and that's it normal blastoise only hits for 100 so after you after you spend your mega blastoise and you're able to land Turtle Missile, after that you're stuck with normal Blastoise and you're really not going to be um, doing too much with that. Next up we're looking at Mega Beedrill. I'm not going to spend too much time on Mega Beedrill because normal Beedrill has way too much miss. You know, um, sure normal Beedrills are nice when Mega Beedrills are on the field, but when they, when Mega Beedrill is not on the field for those several turns, you're, you're, you're in trouble. You're really going to be in trouble. I really love Mega Sceptile. It was really close to being on top of the list. The only reason why I didn't put Mega Sceptile on top of the list is because Normal Sceptile is just as good, if not better, because Normal Sceptile has a little bit more mobility than Mega Sceptile, with Normal Sceptile's blue attack gives you extra mo mobility, while Mega Sceptile's dodge is simply just a dodge. Next up we have Blaziken. Mega Blaziken and Normal Blaziken. So Normal Blaziken, great figure. It hits for 130, it has a 3 star purple that knocks out. Mega Blaziken hits for hits hits hard, but the Wall Crusher is too situational in my opinion. Wall Crusher is a three-star purple once you evolve, but it only knocks out an opponent opponent if two Pokemon of the opposing team are stacked right next to each other. So it, in my from my point of view, from my perspective, I think normal Blaziken is is good enough. You don't need Mega Blaziken and normal Blaziken. It's not completely necessary. Now Mega Swampert. I like Mega Swampert. But normal Swampert needs so much help. It needs like at least two or three other water Pokemon on the field, unless it's a one movement point figure. So one move, move point figures are really difficult to work with. So we're just gonna not spend too much time on Mega Swampert. Sure, normal Swampert can get the mobility if other water Pokemon are on the field, but way too much setup in my opinion. Mega Scizor or Mega Scissor, however you wanna pronounce it. I like Mega Scizor. But the cracked ability needs a, still needs more support. I mean, scissor or or scissor or scissor. In order to crack somebody and not be knocked out, you need like so many things. You need like a steel energy plate. You need a metal sphere plate. You need a what is it? A metal jacket plate. You need so much for for regular scissor to be like competitive. And then you're gonna evolve into mega scissor or mega scissor, hoping to land Crusher Doom. 
You know, it's it's too much uh, setup. It's too much wishing on a, on a star. I don't think they're the best combo in the game. They, it's very strong, but it, I don't think it's the best combo in the game. Next up, we have Mega Gengar. Oh my gosh, Mega Gengar. In my opinion, still the best uh, Mega in the game. Mega Gengar has three it's three moving points. Has the ability to hop over figures. Has the ability to trap figures in their spot. You know, Mega Gengar is a really, really cool figure. It hits really hard for 140. I like Mega Gengar. The only problem is normal Gengar only hits for 100. The normal Gengar, yes, is great in a poison deck. Is is, but you know, it stops right there. You know, any gold, any reliable gold attacker can knock out Mega Gengar. Any uh, any Pokemon that hits for over 100 can knock knock out normal Gengar. So Mega Gen while Mega Gengar is, in my opinion, the best Mega in the game, it's not the best Mega normal combo in the game. Next, I want to look at Mega Sableye. Now, we all have normal Sableye, right? The only thing that Mega Sableye just doesn't give enough oomph to make the make it the best one-two combo in the game. Sure, you know, the goal of Mega Sableye is that you want to evolve and you want to hit Plate 9. You really want to hit Plate 9. Because you can take away energy plate, you can you can take away a, a, a sphere plate, you know, you can take away another mega plate, you know. Mega Sableye is a really, really cool figure. I mean, it can't get knocked out, you know, it can only get surrounded. So Mega Sableye is not going to hurt you, but it's not going to help you unless it hits that three-star purple. Therefore, I don't think it's on top. So the Pokemon that, that I think is on top, I like Mega Mewtwo Y. I mean, Mega Mewtwo Y, um, still phenomenal. You know, the Pokemon, it's very difficult for the Pokemon to be knocked out. On the white side, for the 110 side, it, the Pokemon has to hit for over 140 to knock it out. That's for no chain levels. And on the Hypersonic, Hypersonic is going to be 90 once you evolve Mega Mewtwo Y. So you have to be able to hit between 91 and, and 100. So it's really rare that figures are hitting for that. So I like Mega Mewtwo Y. And the, the, real, the real cool thing about Mega Mewtwo Y is once it devolves usually it's going to devolve on the um on the opponent's entry point and once that happens now you're going to be stuck with Mewtwo so Mewtwo you know at first glance it's like ah it's an okay Pokemon you know it hits for it can has the ability to hit for 120 with zero chain levels but the great thing about Mewtwo is the psychic shove you know once you're in your opponent's entry point you can use psychic shove to knock all the figures to the side and everybody gains weight. So you have a win condition. You know, your first win condition is Mega Mewtwo Y simply just to knock everything out. But the second win condition after after you uh after you devolve to normal Mewtwo is you want to land Psychic Shove. You know, Psychic Shove is a phenomenal ability, which it gives you the ability to knock figures off of the goal goal point, you know? So I really like Mega Mewtwo Y and Mewtwo as the best Mega Non Mega combo in the game. Primarily A because Mega Mewtwo Y lasts longer than seven turns as long as you play a little bit more smart. But the second reason is after you devolve, you actually have another win condition. Try to get Mewtwo on the entry point and shove the opponents off the goal. So I have a couple games I want to spotlight, spotlighting um, Mega Mewtwo Y and Mewtwo. I'm not going to go too depth into Mega Mewtwo Y. That game is going to be a little bit shorter because we all know what Mega Mewtwo Y does. If not, I have a lot of videos on Mega Mewtwo Y already. But but the video, the, the second game is a game I want you guys to take a close look at. That's the game that's spotlighting, you know, how many, why Mewtwo is such a strong figure as well. As always, in the comments down below, let me know, guys, how you feel about the content. Um, so stay tuned for the match. All right, first game is a really quick game. I got two games showing you guys, as as I mentioned before. First game, I'm going to be spotlighting um, Mega Mewtwo Y. It's going to be a really quick video because everybody already knows what Mega Mewtwo Y does. Uh, of course, I'm in red. You know, uh, I'm running my triple Sokaleos as usual. Yeah, the opponent's going to come out and he's going to try to actually go for the win like right away. He's hoping my Sokaleo is a miss machine. And thankfully, the Sokaleo doesn't miss. I bring up my Sogaleo, my second, he's bringing up his Altaria. You no, know, so he's running the Altaria with a uh, Russian Zack and a Coco. So he's really trying to do some stuff. He's going to actually go out and he's going to attack my Panchon, but he figured he doesn't know about this trick. He doesn't know about the parting shot trick because if he did, he would know that that's the easiest way for me to exclude. So I send him to the Ultra Space and he's like, what just happened? See, if he su subscribed to Professor Showtime, he would have known exactly what happened. 
what happened was guys uh he attacked me i landed parting shot he gained weight so i so i'm able to switch uh guzzlord onto the field and i'm able to exclude without even uh rolling any anything with a uh, a guzzlord so of course Mega me to y comes on the field hitting hard and nasty 140 you know now altaria he, he's gonna actually attack with altaria because he has no choice i have two three move point figures on each goal so it's not much he can do you know i, I would anyway so i got both goals capped so i'm simply just gonna um take the goal so that's the first game that's a first win game went really quickly but you guys um probably want to rewind it and look at that again i hit the parting shot with um pancham and that gave me the ability to um to actually switch into my guzzlord and uh exclude the pokemon let's go into the next game which is the game that's going to be spotlighting it's going to be spotlighting the uh the Mewtwo in its normal form, you know? So that was Mega Mewtwo Y, um, but now this is Mewtwo. So Mew Mewtwo, uh, like I said, it has it has many things it can do. You know, it hits for 120, you know, it has a blue and it has a Psychic Shove, which I think is the, it is the most underrated uh, move in the game. All right, guys, for the second match, uh, Mega Mewtwo Y is not gonna do so much work. Um, this time I'm gonna be in red. My opponent is gonna be in blue. Of course, I'm running my staple, which is my triple Soga Leo deck. You know, um, I think Soga Leo is one of the greater figures in the game, especially with the induction of Metal Sphere Plate and the Steel Energy Plate. You know, um, really love uh, Soga Leos, multiple Soga Leos on the same team. You know, once I get a few Altarias, I think that's going to change, though. All right, so the beginning of the match isn't too important. Like I said, Mega Mewtwo Y really doesn't do his job too well. So I'm, st I'm stuck with Mewtwo for the majority of the match. So the beginning of the game, we're just uh, we're just setting up our board. We're playing a, a game of cat and mouse. We're trying to see who's gonna who's gonna um, bite first. You know, I pop a metal sphere plate. You know, now I pop my steel energy plate. You know, this is giving my Sogaleo the abilities to hit for 140, 110, which is nothing to snooze at. You know, uh, now I'm gonna start with my Mega Mewtwo Y. Everything is set on the board. Now I'm gonna attack, attack, attack with my Mega Mewtwo, Mewtwo Y and see where that gets me. You know, so first we're going to go after the Sceptile. Now, Sceptile rolls a Hypersonic. I mean, I roll a Hypersonic, so that's not going to um, do much against his 140. The cool thing is that I don't get knocked out because the attack is not between 91 and 99. This time, I roll a Psych a psy Strike, and I'm able to knock out the Sceptile. So cool. So I get one knockout. Now, he, uh, he approaches with his uh, Formosa. I say, I'm not scared of an Ultra Beast, especially not a deck with just one Ultra Beast. So I attack the Ultra Beast, but I land a miss. I land a miss. And that's a weak point with all Pokemon, all, I mean, with most Pokemon, you know, that that little four sliver miss slice, when it lands, it lands. So you know, my Mega Mewtwo Y goes to, the, goes to the PC, but I max revive. Now let's see what Mewtwo can do. He advances with his Gengar. You know, I I advance with my Mewtwo. My Mewtwo. You know, he blocks with his Furimosa again. This time now I'm going to attack the Greninja thinking I have it easy peasy, but again, a miss lands. You guys know Sogali is a miss machine. So the Water Shark and the 40, 40 damage takes out my big bad Sogaligo. Now he's threatening to surround my, 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 my Mewtwo. Sun Steel Strike goes down. I'm able to knock out the Gengar, so that's cool. But he's going to actually surround on the right side. No, he doesn't surround. I think he missed it. He missed the surround, but there's not much I could do. He attacks with his Raikou. And a dodge goes down. Like I said, the Sogaleo has the ability to hit for 140 with the Steel Energy and the Metal Sphere Plate. Both cracked. He's gonna attack my Pancham. I'm looking for the part Parting Shop again, but I don't get it. Even if I even if I didn't land a Parting Shot, that Gold Attack from Raikou would have took me out. Then I'm gonna attack the Raikou, and I I, I knock him out. And I got the Raikou. So now. He's gonna advance with his Entei. I advance with my Guzzlord. He blocks with his Sceptile. I attack the Formosa, and a Psychic Shove lands, but Psychic Shove doesn't do anything but give weight because it can't bend around corners. And he's gonna surround my Mewtwo. So now my Mewtwo got surrounded, my Mega Mewtwo I rolled, rolled a miss. So uh, it's not looking good for me, you know? I attack with my uh, Guzzlord. You know, Guzzlord is a one move point figure right now, so it's going to be slow as Molasses to get up there. I attack the Entei. Sunsteel Strike lands. I'm able to knock Entei out. 
you know, he's going to bring out his Raikun now. And I slowly but surely, stressing to slowly inch up my Guzzlord. Slowly, because Guzzlord is just a one moving point figure. Now I take the entry point. He's going to slide over his Fermosa. I'm going to move over my Sogaleo, and I attack his Raikou with my Sogaleo. And I win the roll. You know, Sogaleos are doing very well this game. Started off slow, but Sogaleo is doing well. So now he's going to move up his, his Fermosa. Now I'm threatening the surround with my Sogaleo, but I don't know if he missed it or what. I think he missed it. I was able to, he fell asleep and I was able to surround the Gengar. But my Sogaleo that's next to the Fermosa is paralyzed, so it's not going to be doing that much. That much. He sees that he attacks the Sogaleo with his Fermosa. And I land a Sunsteel Strike. So it's kind of like a double knockout because the Sunsteel Strike lands. So I go to the PC, he goes to the PC. I roll up with a fully charged Sogaleo, no status conditions on it. I go and I I, attack, I attempt to knock out the Fermosa, but the double miss lands. We both land a double miss. He keeps up with his Sceptile. I move up with my Panchamp. He slides over his Raikou and he attacks my Sogaleo. My Sogaleo lands the 130, but Thunderous Blow, blow lands. So that means I'm gonna be paralyzed along with Fermosa and Sceptile. So all three of us are paralyzed. I move up with my Panchamp. He he approaches with his Gengar. I attack the Fermosa, but I have a huge miss, and he has a small sliver of a miss. Just the just the the dodge went to a miss slice, but he's able to um he gets knocked out. He gets knocked out. So now Septile comes. And Septile, I attack Septile, but I have a huge miss, and his goal turns to a miss. So he's able to knock out my Sogaleo. Sceptile knocks out Sogaleo. Sogaleo goes to the PC. And it rotates the Mewtwo to, out of the PC. So now Arm Thrust only lands twice. I'm not able to evolve. If I spun it three times, I will be able to evolve. So now Mewtwo is able to come out. And so he's gonna backtrack with, with his Greninja. Mewtwo comes some more. So now, finally Mewtwo gets some play now. So now Mewtwo is gonna all right, so Mewtwo is going to attack, right? So Mewtwo is going to attack Sceptile for the first time. You know, uh, Sceptile has a miss, but we both roll their blue. I roll Annihilate. He rolls his stealth hit, so we both roll a blue. You know, Mewtwo attacks again. This time, Annihilate rolls, so it's a, it's, a, it's a neutral roll. I have to back up a little bit, back up two steps. Gengar comes over. Mewtwo is going to attack again. So Mewtwo is attacking Sceptile for the third time. This time, a Psychic Shove lands. So on the third time's a charm. The third time, Mewtwo moves everybody over. Everybody gets a weight. You know, my opponent is forced to use a Hurdle Jump. So he Hurdle Jumps with Gengar. The fourth time, Mewtwo attacks. Now, Mewtwo lands a Psychic Cut. He's able to knock out the Gengar in the 120. So the, the Gengar goes to the bench. So now, that was the fifth time. So now this is the sixth time. Mewtwo is going to attack, this time a Psychic Shove goes down, so now he's going to move move over Sceptile, and the Entei gains the weight. So now, my opponent is forced to use a Gold Block, so this is the 7th attack that's coming up. So now Mewtwo is going to attack, and a Psychic Cut lands, Water Shuriken only spins once, and he attacks, so my opponent is completely frustrated. You know, this is going to be the 8th attack, so now Sceptile is going to come, Mewtwo is going to uh, attack Sceptile, this is going to be the 8th attack, and the Psychic Cut lands again, and a Leaf Blade only spins once, he knocks out, and my opponent is totally dumbfounded. After that, I know the, the video doesn't capture it, but a wait win, I mean, a wait win happened, the opponent let the timer go down, you know, we all hate when that happens, poor sportsmanship, poor conduct, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, that's what we expect. So guys, in the comments down below, let me know how you feel. Let me know if you think that Mega Mewtwo Y along with Mewtwo is one of the best 1-2 Megas in the game. Let me know why or why not you agree or disagree. Uh, this is Showtime, signing off. Peace trainers.